Hello, everybody. This is Leo from CCS America. First, thank you very much to join this webinar. This is a webinar series that we're going to go over the lighting technique in machine vision. There are four webinars in total in this series, and we're going to cover the basic geometric, basic wavelength, advanced geometric, and advanced wavelength technique in machine vision. After this webinar series, we will be able to select the proper light into the machine vision application. And in each webinar, we have two portions. In the first portion will be a presentation that we uh, introduce the concept about each technique, and then we will link them to the product so we know to get each lighting technique image, what product should we use? And then in the second section, we're going to go into the lab and we're going to see some real sample and to see the lighting technique by some real example. Before we go into the lighting technique itself, I would like to spend some time to talk about why lighting is so important in machine vision. In machine vision, lighting is to create the contrast on the feature and also remove the noise on the background. That's why lighting is so important in machine vision. But that also brings up another question. In machine vision, there was so many different light sources. As an example, in CCS, we have over 500 uh, standard product. If we need to test this product one by one, you're never going to find a good one. It will take you forever at the end, you cannot choose the right one. So that's where the lighting technique come in place. With the lighting technique, it can guide us what type of light or we, we should focus on or what kind of light should we test with. So we can significantly fasten the, the time we need for the lab testing. And also it will help us to find the best lighting. So now let's go into the lighting technique. Again, today we're going to cover the basic geometric inside machine vision lighting. The first topic would be bright field and dark field. Uh, bright field, dark field is the, I would say the most common term in this industry. Everybody is talking about bright field and dark field, so it's really important. So exactly what is bright field, dark field? Bright field, dark field, in simple word, is talking about the position relationship between the light and the camera at what kind of light the camera is looking at. Let's see what does it mean. So we have an IC and on the IC there is a laser marking product code. What we need to do is read this product code. Now we have a light saw on the left side and then we have a camera on the right side. Let's trace the light. The light, the light come out from the light source and then you reach the sample surface. And on the surface here, where there's a flat surface, there is a direct reflection and the reflection light will go into the camera. So you can see the relationship between light and the camera. They are in the right position where the direct reflection of the light will go into the camera. So the whole background will show bright. Only where there is a defect, this defect is made, uh, it's not defect, it's a data code. This data code is done by a uh, laser marking and this laser marking will destroy the surface and this area will become a little bit rough. So in this area, there is no direct reflection. It still have some scattering uh, reflection, some diffuse line, but the light is much darker. So we show black in the image. If we keep the same sample, we keep the same light source, if we move the camera to a different location, we will get a totally different image. Let's trace the light again. The light coming out from the light source and on the flat surface, there is a direct reflection. But this reflect light is not going into the camera. So the whole background is dark. Only where there is a product code because the surface is really, really rough, you have some scattering light, the diffuse re reflection. And this light will go into the camera and become bright. 
And because the whole background, the direct reflection light won't go into the camera, it show dark, we call it dark field. Let's see one more example. This is a, a battery. So when we use the battery, it, there is a mega battery, there's a cylindrical body. And then we put the carbon and put some material inside. And after that, we need to close the cap. When we close the cap, um, there was a junction area. And this connection area, we need to make sure this area is in the right axis. It's also not too long or not too short, so we can close the cap in the right position. So this is the two image, very obvious. The left one is the bright field, and the right one is the dark field image. The right one is taken by a coaxial light, which we're going to go, in, go into the detail in the next section. This is a very typical uh, bright field light source. Uh, we have a panel light on the side, and there is a half mirror in front of the panel light. So the light coming out from the panel, and then in the, at the half mirror, half of the light will, will, will uh, reflect the sample. Half of the light will pass through, but we are not using the light pass through. So the light going down, reach the sample. And on the flat area, the light will reflect and going up. And then you reach the half mirror again, half of the light will go through and then go into the camera. So you can see the direct reflection light will reach the camera and the whole background is bright. This is a bright field. On the right side, it's a very typical dark field image that we have the light coming from a low angle. So the direct reflection light will not reach in the camera and show dark. And only where there is this kind of connection area, this light will, will scatter the light and go into the camera and show bright. So bright field and dark field. So we show quite a few example about bright field, dark field. Uh, it's really the relationship between the, uh, the position, relationship between the camera and the light, whether the direct reflection light will reach the camera or not. But probably from this, all this sample, we kind of feel the same thing that uh, bright field and dark field, it does give an opposite image, but in most of the case, both image will work. So when should we use a bright field and when should we use a dark field? Here's one example. Uh, it's actually have much more we can talk about when should we use bright field and when should, should we use dark field. Uh, so this is just one of the example. So in this example, we need to look at the product date on a bottom. So the above one, you can see uh, the light, the, re the direct reflection of the light will go into the camera so we can create a bright field image. And in the below image, you can see the direct reflection light is not reaching the camera, so we are getting a dark field image. So in this image, um, actually both image will work, but we do see a difference. So for example, for the above image, when we draw a ROI, a region of interest, the feature is black and we want to get area that all the background is white, but no matter how we do, we still have some black in the background, especially around here. This black background is almost touching the data code, so which will potentially uh, give some unstable in the machine. On the other hand, the below image it's pretty clean. If we draw our eye from here, all the feature is white and the whole background is black and there's no noise. So when we look at the image, there was a very good way to, to identify whether this is a good image or not, which is the signal versus the noise. So if the image have very good contrast and have a less noise, that would be a good image. So in general speaking, the dark field image get a little bit, uh, better result in performance. It will be more stable. But again, it's actually much more uh, we can target in bright field and dark field. For example, a lot of cases we find out dark field is really good at to pick up surface scratches or some bubble. And then on the other hand, bright field is really good at to pick up the surface coating defect uh, or some very small dent that is, doesn't have the very dramatic transaction. 
So there's a lot we can talk in private and dark field, uh, but today it just give you a brief idea what is private field and what is dark field. And also we have one example, when should we use private field and when should we use dark field. In the next section, we're going to connect the lighting technique into each product. So we know when we need to get a bright field or dark field image, what light should we use? We're going to cover three products, ring light, bar light, and correction light. The first ring light. The first ring light we're going to talk about is the direct ring light LDR series. We have three versions of LDR featuring different PCB angle. The standard LDR is high angle. It's good for a bright field image. And then we have LDR-LA, which mount the LED in low angle for a dark field image. We also have LDR-LA1, where all the LED is mounted zero degree to get extreme dark field image. And then we have a multi-angle ring light HPR series. The unique design of this ring light made this ring light really flexible. You can use this ring light at different walking distance to get both bright field and dark field image. Personally, this is the first ring light I go with because it's really flexible. So you will know whether you need to go with bright field and dark field, and then you can consider whether you want to switch the direct ring light LDR for better contrast. The last ring light is the FE ring, which featuring the floodlight application, where we need a long walking distance and need to cover a big area. This ring light have a built-in driver, so you just need 24 volt power supply. You also have a very unique feature that you can change the emitting angle and the diffuser in the field for different application. The next light is bar light. We also have two version bar light. We have the direct bar light LDL2 series, which is really compact and flexible. You can mount this light at high angle to get a bright field image. You can also mount this light at low angle to get a dark field image. So it's really flexible and also uh, space saving. The next bar light is the FE Flex flood bar light. It's similar to the FE ring. It's also featuring the uh, flood light application where we need a long walking distance and big coverage, like in automotive, in logistic, or in some robot picking application. The last light will be the correction light. We already discussed that in the uh, previous slide when we talk about the battery inspection application. Uh, so this light is really good to get a bright field image uh, for the shiny surface of the uh, product. For example, the metal surface is shiny. If we use the ring light, we get a glare. But if we use the correction light, we can get a very uniform bright field image. For the next topic, we're going to talk about uh, shadowless light. What is shadowless light? Shadowless light, not like a bright field dark field. For bright field dark field, we have a light from a certain direction. The bright field is high angle, dark field is low angle. And the basic concept of a bright field dark field is to get a good contrast on the surface defect or the surface transaction. The dome light is a different approach. We are not only have the light from one certain direction, instead, we need the light that come from all different angles. We have the light come from low angle, middle angle. We also have light coming from the high angle to create a uh, cloudy day illumination. So the reason we need this kind of lighting is to remove the surface unevenness or the texture. Let's see one example to help understand why we need to use shadowless light. So the left side is a very typical bright field ring light. It's a high angle ring light. It's our direct ring light, LDR. If we, we use a bright field image, we get the direct reflection on all the flat area, but when there's a wrinkle, it shows dark. So it's definitely have a lot of noise for us to inspect this data code stably. So in this application, we're going to use a shadowless light. So for the shadowless light, we have the light along all different angles. So we can remove the surface, the texture of unevenness and get a very good image. And this is a very typical shadowless, shadowless light. It's a dome light called HPD, this part number. So we have the LED mounting on the bottom and facing up. And then there is a dome shell on top. It's a reflection shell. So the light go up from the LED, hit this dome, and then will reflect back. And because it is a dome shape, we have the light come from all different angles to create a shadowless light.
In the next section, we're going to connect the shadowless lighting technique into each product. For the shadowless light, we have two big categories, a standard dome light and a flat dome light. For the standard dome light, we have HBD2 series. This is the most common and uh, standard dome light we will see. We have the LED mounting on the uh, bottom facing up, and then we have a reflection dome uh, shell on top to reflect the light from different angle. Uh, this light is uh, commonly used, but there's one downside is uh, when the field of view get bigger, uh, the light size also need to get really big. Uh, for some machines that we cannot fit the standard dome light, uh, we, we will use the flat dome light. Uh, for the flat dome light, we have two series. The first one is the CCS Original LFX series. This light uses a very unique design. LED is mounted on the side, and we have a transparent light guy in the center. Uh, the transparent light guy will diffuse the light towards the sample side. So it can create a shadowless light, uh, but with a much slimmer housing. There is a physical uh, size limit for the LFX series. Uh, the standard size only got, go up to 300 by 300. For the bigger size, we will go with the FEFD uh, flat, flat dome light, which is basically a panel light with a camera hole in the center. Uh, for the standard size, it can go up to one meter by one meter. Uh, if we go with the custom solution, it can get even bigger. So here conclude the uh, uh, geometric lighting technique uh, in machine vision. Um, and in the next section, uh, we will go into the lab. We will uh, test some real sample and see how to use a bright field, dark field, and shadowless light on some real sample. So for the first sample, uh, it's a ball bearing. So for the ball bearing, the surface is really flat and has a little bit specular. Uh, and on top of the ball bearing, there is some date code and product code. And what we need to do is to inspect the product code. And we put this ball bearing under the camera. The first two light we're going to use is the LDR direct ring light. And this is the really typical light to get a bright field and dark field image. And we have two versions here. Uh, this is the uh, high angle version, it's the typical light to create a bright field. And we also have a low angle version, which is the typical light to create a dark field image. So let me turn on the light. So you can see if I use the uh, high angle LDR direct ring light, you can get a really good bright field image. So in here, the light goes straight down and then it will reflect on the flat surface and go back to the camera. So hold the whole background is bright. Only when you hit this data call, uh, this data call, the surface a little bit rough, like a paper beach, so it gets some scattering light, but it's really dark, so we get bright view. And if we use the low angle to back ring light, where I keep the camera lens, everything the same, or just changing the light saw, we can get a dark view image. So in here, uh, the LED is mounted at the angle, so the light is coming from the low angle. And in the flat surface, the direct reflection uh, will not go into the camera. Only in the date code, there is some scattering re uh, reflection. The scattering line will go into the camera and create a dark field image. So this is, the again, the really typical uh, direct LDR ring light, which we use a lot for creating bright field and dark field image. Another really common light uh, would be the bar light. Uh, the benefit of the bar light is the flexibility. So for example, uh, we can put the bar light in the high angle or the low angle to create the both bright field and dark field image. Let me turn on and show you what, how the world does it look like. It's still keeping the camera and the sample the same. If we use the bar light, if we put it in the uh, high angle, we can get a bright field. And we can use the same light, but we can mount it in the uh, low angle and can get a dark field image. So the main benefit of the bar light is the flexibility. And it's also really uh, compact, so we can put it in some really tight space uh, machine. In some application, when we use the bright field dark field, uh, the walking distance uh, could be really critical. Uh, for example, here I have a gear, and on the surface there's a lot of scratches. So to, to inspect the scratch, low angle is a very common, uh, the dark field image is a very common solution we will use. But if we use the low angle uh, 
And now I'm using a HPL. It's a multi-angle ring light. And we put it in the low working distance. And we definitely get the dark field image. However, on the surface, you can see we don't really see the scratch. Uh, but if we begin to change the walking distance, you can see in one sweet spot, we're going to see the scratch really clear in, this, in the image. So let's try again. Uh, at this walking distance, we can see the scratch. But if we make it closer, uh, you can see we lose the scratch. So it depends on how the scratch is created, but in a lot of cases, we find out uh, for the dark field or also the bright field, the walking distance is really critical and important. And that's also the benefit about this HPR multi-angle ring light. The unique design of this light making can work in low working distance and also the long working distance. So it's really flexible. So that covered the uh, uh, ring light. Again, we have a multi-angle ring light, which is really flexible. You can use it in, edge, in different working distance to get different results. We also have the direct ring light, LDR and LDR-LA, low angle version which is really good to get a high contrast bright field dark field image. In some application, let's see another example. Uh, this is a metal plate, it's actually a can cover. So the metal is actually really shiny and we need to inspect the defect on top. Uh, for this kind of shiny application, if we use the ring light uh, to get a bright field image, uh, we usually find out we will see the glare. So how to solve this application? So now I'm using a normal high angle ring light. You can see. Let me turn down the test a little bit. We definitely get a bright field image, however, we also see the glare. And this defect, it does show up well where, there's, uh, where the image is uniform. But because of the glare, it makes it really hard to uh, program. And even we change the size of the ring line, we don't use the bigger one, we still we see the glare. So for this type of shiny surface application, if we need a bright field image, the best solution will be a correction line. So here's a correction line we already uh, introduced it in the presentation. So basically we have a, a panel line on the side and we have a half mirror, uh, more than 45 degree. So the line will uh, come up on the panel and you reflect on half mirror and go to the surface. And then you reflect on the surface and, half, and then go through the half mirror and reach the camera. So it's from top to bottom. So it's a really typical bright field image. If we turn on the light, you can see this time I, we can get a very uniform image and we don't see any glare on the surface and all the scratches pop, pop up really clear. So we have a really good image and stable image for programming. So that's the coaxial light. So that pretty much is the bright view and dark view. But sometimes in some application, uh, we actually don't really want a bright field and dark field. Bright field and dark field is really good there to pick up the surface defect and um, um, when we see the surface changes. But in some application, we actually want the image to get really uniform. Uh, so for example, this is a med medicine package. You can see the surface is really 3D and have a lot of um, like a, uh, band and a bump structure here. And if you want to make sure all the, the peel it exists, well, we want to try to get a uniform image that can remove the surface texture and the unevenness. Let's try it in the in the camera. So if we use a normal uh, ring line so to get a bright field image, uh, this will be the image we can get. So um, the image is not, not really bad, but if we look at the, the background here, we get the reflection on the flat area, but when there is a uh, like small bump, uh, this, all this area become uh, dark. So this is bright field. And also we, if we use the dark field, we get the opposite image. So it and also has a lot of glare. So that is not a good image to process. So for this kind of application, if you want to remove the surface unevenness, uh, we will use the dome light. 
So this is one of the uh, typical dome light. We have LED on the bottom facing out, and we have this reflection shield on top, so we can reflect the light uh, bad. And now we have a bright field depth field. For the dome light, we have the light coming from all different angles, high angle, low angle, medium angle. So this light is really good at to remove the surface texture. And let's see the final result. If we use a uh, dome light, this will be the image we can get. You can see the whole background is really uniform, and we can easily inspect whether all the pills there. And also, we can even inspect some defect on the surface too. Um, however, in some cases, we will find out uh, even uh, if we use the regular dome, uh, the, the hole for the camera sometimes will create some trouble. For example, I have a can here. Do need to increase the change the walking distance a little bit. Uh, so you can see under the image here, it's also a can, and then we need to inspect the data the data code on top. But this time we find out the camera hole create a shadow on the image, uh, which is pretty straightforward because the surface is pretty shiny, pretty specular. So this hole just directly show up in the image. Uh, so for this kind of application, the best solution we have. Will be a flat dome line. So we also introduced it in the uh, presentation. It's also a dome line, uh, but it's not like the regular dome. Instead, we're using a special light guide. And in the light guide, there's a lot of uh, small dot, and this dot will diffuse the light. So the LED is mounted on the side, and you go into the light guide and transfer in the light guide. And when you hit the small dot, the dot will diffuse the light into one direction. Um, and and also because the whole light guide is transparent, the camera can be directly see through it. So compared to the regular dome light, you can see there's no camera hole, and we will also will see the shadow with the dark spot in the center of the image. So if we uh, so if we maybe increase the intensity, so you can see this will be the image we can get. Uh, definitely there's no camera hole in the center, and we get a very uniform coverage on, on the whole surface. Uh, when we use this dome light, it does have some trick too. Um, the basic concept is we try to reduce the dot effect. Um, sometimes the dot will show up in the image, and the, the best way to remove it is to move the dot outside of the depth field. To do that, we usually first open the aperture to make sure the depth field is really shallow, and then um, change the intensity a little bit. So now we have a very shallow double view, we focus the image, and then we can begin to move the light and make sure that the dot is outside the double view, so we don't see the dot effect so much. So here's the uh, flat dot line. So the last part I want to cover is the bright field, dark field, and the dome line, we sometimes we, we will combine them. Uh, we are not using uh, like a one, only one technique in one time. Sometimes we do need to combine uh, multiple lines to create a, a best image. And that's kind of really case by case. Uh, we need to really look at the, the feature, look at the sample, and then define whether we should use brighter dark field or we should use uh, dome light, uh, the shadows, or sometimes we need to use both shadow light, the uh, shadows light, and the low angle to create the best contrast. Um, that's everything. I kind of conclude the uh, geometric te technology under the machine vision lighting.